protests in Ukraine have now left at least 25 people dead. Hundreds more have been injured in violent clashes between police and demonstrators. EU leaders are calling on both sides to negotiate towards a peaceful settlement. Arisia Lutsevich is a research fellow at the Foreign Policy Group at Chatham House and joins me now. Hello to you, Arisia. It's been, it's been a drawn-out confrontation, hasn't it? Why is it suddenly intensified? It intensified because the trust uh, between the parties to find a solution inside the walls of the parliament, as it was proposed by the political opposition to amend the constitution and to put Ukraine back on track of democracy, failed yesterday. So protesters took to the streets to encircle the parliament. At the same time, the government put an ultimatum to them saying they have to leave the square, otherwise they will clear it out. So this escalation also shows the inability of uh, President Yanukovych to address the root causes of the protest which started three months ago, which is more democracy, return to European integration. So the, the government cracking down, the protesters hardening in their resolve, saying that we will go nowhere. Um, where do you see this? Is this the end game or is it moving into a more serious phase? It's clearly moving into a more serious phase with so many dozens of casualties and burning fires and burning cars and some of the people in the civilian shooting some of the journalists. I think EU was right to call this emergency meeting to think about the united response and smart sanctions can bring change uh, because perhaps President Yanukovych himself will not uh, be willing to compromise but his financial backers, political groups, his ruling party may feel that the cost of doing business this way is too high. So you think sanctions could actually make a difference? Yes, they could. Um, let's go back to the beginning of this, what this conflict began about and, and where it is now. It began uh, three months ago when Ukrainian government put a U-turn on the foreign policy to bring Ukraine closer to the integration, both political and economic, with the Euro European Union. It basically, when they decided to hold the process, Ukrainians understood that prospect for reform is not on the horizon. So right now uh, we have not seen any major developments or movements towards a resolution and the European Union has to, in a more decisive way, push the sides uh, to the table and have international mediation to restore trust uh, on both sides. Yeah, EU foreign ministers meeting tomorrow calling for negotiations. Can you see any prospect of compromise? I think if they will prepare a really serious sanction package, including asset freeze and visa bans on those members of parliament who are sustaining violence in Kyiv, the uh, majority, uh, pro-governmental majority, may crack and form a new um, majority in the parliament that will vote for preliminary elections and change in the constitution to take away some of the powers from the president. Is it possible to see any resolution while Yanukovych is still in power? Yes, it is possible because, in a way, uh, this would restore a balance of power. To so it's, give, it's reducing his yes, powers. Yes, it's reducing his powers. He may still remain in power for quite some time, but this will be a space of uh, freedom expanded and the opportunity to hold elections, to uh, have a legislative system amended that could guarantee free and fair elections. People are now talking about civil war. It's a long way from that now, but this is how civil wars start, isn't it? You know, the risk of civil war at this point should not be exaggerated because what we see on the streets uh, in Kyiv is the fight between civilians and riot police. There's not so many civilians in eastern part of Ukraine or uh, pro-Russian regions that will be fighting those Ukrainians, fellows who are basically fighting for more human rights. So I would not put at this point the conflict on the verge of civil war. Well, I was going to ask you actually about that, the fighting primarily concentrated in Kiev. There, there have been uh, bouts in other cities as well but but has it spread more widely and do you think it is likely to it has already spread more widely. We have seen it in previous weeks, protesters taking over governmental offices, including in the east where there were encircling of the uh, buildings and demanding the resignation of some of the governors. Clearly, most of the human capital is concentrated in Kyiv, but from the list of casualties, we see that these people come from all over Ukraine, from east, from west, from Crimea, from small and big towns. So it's quite representative in terms of uh, what's happening on the square. There are very strong arguments, though, aren't there, on both sides for which way the country should go. It is very much split. 
Well, at this point, uh, the question is what kind of country should be? It's not so much why should, where should it go. Clearly, European model of integration offers rule of law, respect for human rights, and that's why Ukrainians are there. But uh, before we start moving in any way of European integration, we have to restore economy and we have to restore some balance of power and some basic democratic rules inside Ukraine. What do you think the next move will be by the president? He might call in opposition again to discuss, but I think this could have happened with the European mediation. Uh, I uh, think that so far we will see some um, suspicious calm on the streets. Looks like riot police is not advancing, but they are creating obstacles for other protesters to join and reinforce the protest. Yeah, so what we're seeing at the moment, you're saying, is a pause, but a temporary one. Yes, that's for sure. Okay, Osia, thank you very much indeed for talking to us.